Mariana Trench animals don't get enough credit. They are scarier than Megalodon but prefer to live their life deep down where they are not seen by many. The Mariana Trench is a large and deep oceanic basin located in the Pacific Ocean, west of the Mariana Islands. It's above the Pacific Ring of Fire, one of the ocean's deepest trenches, reaching depths over 11 kilometers, 36,000 feet. This is where some scary creatures have chosen to set many of their stories. The Mariana Trench has been home to many unusual creatures that could still exist today. We have made a list of the 20 Mariana Trench creatures that are scarier than Megalodon. And that takes us to this creature that would just stare at you for breakfast. At the moment that you're looking at it, they are famous for their ability to squirt ink out of their mouth when they feel threatened or when they hunt prey. These scary fish look like they have prey in their mouths, but that's not true. That's its jaw. If you see this creature in the pool, you will lose your breath because it looks like it already has prey in its mouth, and you are the next. They have a second set of large teeth that are always getting bigger so that when the fish feels it's at a safe depth, it can close its mouth and still bite something. Number 20. The Fang Tooth Fangtooth fish are predators that feed on smaller fish, crustaceans, much larger fish, and even squids. They have grotesquely massive jaws with giant projecting fangs. In the deep water, there's a carnivorous fish called the fangtooth. Like many other deep sea species, fangtooth fish have a black tint and an unsettling appearance. These shouldn't be mistaken with the fangtooth moray, a big vibrant eel. The fangtooth fish has a massive jaw with gigantic, vicious looking teeth, similar to anglerfish. In actuality, compared to the size of its body, the fangtooth fish has the largest teeth of any known fish. They had to evolve unique receptacles on either side of their brains to accommodate the lower jaw's enormous fangs. Its body is severely laterally compressed due to its deep water habitat, making it appear quite slender from above. Its thin skin, pointed spines, and short ragged fins give it a cadaverous appearance. Accentuated by its excessively huge jaw, fangtooths are thought to have very weak eyesight and small hazy eyes. They make up for this by possessing unusually well-defined lateral lines clearly visible on both sides of their bodies. Fish have a unique sensory organ system called a lateral line that enables them to detect movement and pressure changes in the surrounding water. With all these abnormalities, what word best describes fangtooth? Share with us in the comment section below. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Gumbo Octopus You might be astonished to learn that there is no Disney or Muppet character named Grimpo Toothus. Instead, it belongs to the genus of Dumbo octopuses, which are pelagic umbrella octopuses. The Dumbo octopus is small compared to other octopods, measuring only 20 to 30 centimeters on average, slightly bigger than an adult guinea pig. However, it has traits that live up to its moniker. It uses modified flippers on top of its head that resemble ears to propel itself through the water and navigate currents, earning it the nickname Dumbo from the fictional elephant that used its ears to fly. The other peculiar characteristics of Grimpo Toothus are adaptations to live in the frigid pressure field depths of the ocean. The 13 identified species of umbrella octopuses come in various sizes, hues, and patterns, and they can flush or blend into their surroundings. Due to the Dumbo octopus's infrequent contact with predators in the deep sea, it differs from most octopuses in not having an ink sac. Although they live in such deep water, prey is almost as scarce as predators, but that doesn't imply they aren't concerned. They hunt for food, consuming pelagic invertebrates like polyshate worms, pelagic copepods, isopods, amphipods, and other crustaceans that swim above the ocean floor. When they come to eat, they ingest it whole. Amazing creature out there. Does it mean its teeth are useless? Share your view about it in the comment section below. Number 18. Barrel Eye Fish Two bright green upward pointing orbs visible through the transparent dome on this odd fish's forehead are one of its most distinctive features. The upward facing eyes may detect prey in the water column above them, but can rotate forward when necessary. Barrel eyes are found at the ocean's depths when the light from the surface gradually turns to darkness. It looks up to observe the silhouettes of its prey with its incredibly acute eyes. The barrel eye is a relatively small fish, typically reaching 6 inches 
The main component of the barrelized diet is zooplankton. Scientists think the barreli may ingest crustaceans, caught in the spinophore's tentacles based on what they discover in the fish's stomach contents. The barreli is seized through its transparent head and detects prey swimming above it in the water column with its eyes directed upward. Barrelis are believed to be lone species that live in the twilight to midnight regions of the ocean, typically between 2,000 and 2,600 feet deep, 600 and 800 meters. Did you realize it? Barracuda have wide, flat fins that enable precision maneuvering and near-complete stillness in the water in addition to their incredible sight. Mbari's remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, have made more than 5,600 dives over more than three decades of deep sea exploration. Yet as of 2022, they have only come across the species nine times. Number 17. The Sea Devil Anglerfish Monterey Bay conceals fabulously huge creatures in an underwater canyon that is deeper than the Grand Canyon, right on the tip of the California coastline. A rare black sea devil, anglerfish, is one such animal, and it was recently captured on camera, swimming through its underwater environment. Take solace in the female anglerfish being just three and a half inches long if the fish's toothy jaw and lifeless gaze spook you. The more than 200 different species of anglerfish range in size from less than a foot to over three feet in some cases. However, all the females possess a spine resembling a fishing pole and are crowned with a bright flesh lure. The fish gets its name from this characteristic because it employs the lure to get prey near enough to be grabbed by its powerful jaws. Only a handful of anglerfish have ever been documented on camera. The only task that males seem capable of performing is finding a female and mating with her as soon as possible. The only purposes of the male are sex and enjoyment. Would you love to belong to this species? If you have the chance, please share your honest opinion with us in the comment section below. Number 16. The Goblin Shark The extremely bizarre looking goblin shark is an impressive array of long, pointed teeth and a distinctively shaped snout. However, the fish is not dangerous to humans because it lives in deep water. A shovel-like snout, a flabby body, and a tail with a poorly formed lower lobe are all characteristics of the goblin shark. The protruding mouth of the goblin shark is one of its distinguishing characteristics. The mouth can either stretch beneath the nose or retract to a place under the eye. The species can be found in marine waters near a depth of around 1,200 meters, close to the seafloor. The goblin shark spreads its jaws forward more quickly than any other species when it's feeding. The snout's underside is highly porous. These pores are the ampullae of Lorenzini, the electricity-detecting organs, and exterior apertures. The goblin shark most likely uses electromagnetic fields to locate its prey. Do goblin sharks pose a threat? The goblin shark is not thought to be harmful to humans. When you meet one, feel free to say hello. Your life isn't in danger. Number 15. The Deep Sea Hatchet Fish one kind of deep sea fish is the deep sea hatchet fish. It's present in all of the world's seas and oceans. The waters around South and Central America are home to the largest population of hatchet fish. Hatchet fish come in 45 different species. Their depth ranges from 600 to 4,500 feet, depending on their size and kind. Freshwater hatchet fish and deep sea hatchet fish are two separate fish species. Freshwater hatchet fish can be raised in aquariums, unlike deep sea species. There is no endangered species list for deep water hatchet fish. Deepwater hatchet fish vary in color depending on their species. Silver scales typically cover the body of tiny hatchet fish. Greater species may be brown or green in hue. The deep sea hatchet fish gets its name from its peculiar body form, which resembles a hatchet. Deep sea refers to the fish's preferred habitat, which lies at tremendous depths. The flat-bodied deep sea hatchet fish has big, upward-facing eyes that are tubular. They dwell in extreme darkness with little light. As a result, they have developed eyes that can detect even the smallest shadows in the water. Jumping out of the water is a skill of deep sea hatchet fish. During the hops, it can catch little insects like flies and mosquitoes. The day is spent in hiding on the ocean floor by deep water hatchet fish. Number 14. The Zombie Worm in contrast to brains, zombie worms are more interested in bones. 
Zombie worms do not directly consume mineral bones. Instead, they are broken down for their internal lipids. However, as they lack a mouth and a stomach, their method of eating differs greatly from ours. They release an acid from their skin that dissolves bone and releases the contained fat and protein. Symbiotic bacteria then break down the fat and protein in the worms. It's unknown how Ocidax obtains nutrients from the bacteria. They may merely digest the bacteria, or nutrients may be supplied to the worm in some other manner. They cling to any bones they can discover by digging into them with roots that have symbiotic bacteria in them. Their bodies have feathery plumes that protrude from the other end, which serve as gills to draw oxygen from the waters. When startled, zombie worms can retract these plumes inside their bodies. Even worse, only female worms engage in drilling since the minuscule males reside inside their bodies. In one investigation, a single female zombie worm included 111 men. Because the eggs and sperm are near one another, the annoying step of trying to find a match is eliminated. The worms can then release several fertilized eggs, widely in the hopes that some… Number 13. The Deep Sea Dragonfish The fierce predator that lives in the world's deep waters is the deep sea dragonfish, also referred to as the scaleless dragonfish. Its scientific name is Grammatostomias flagella barba, and its teeth are disproportionately enormous for their size. It's a little fish, only reaching approximately 6 inches, about 15 centimeters, despite its horrifying appearance. Dragonfish come in many distinct species. They all look quite much alike. The deep sea dragonfish is one of the many deep sea fish species that can generate its own light via a chemical process known as bioluminescence. The photophore is a unique organ that creates light. These flashing lights are thought to help fish catch prey and even indicate possible matches in the dark sea. The dragonfish has a broad head and a mouth filled with many pointed teeth that resemble fangs. A barbel, a lengthy protrusion linked to its chin, is another feature. This barbel has a photophore on its tip that emits light. The sides of the dragonfish's body are covered in photophores as well. During mating, these light's organs could be utilized to alert other dragonfish. They might. The deep sea dragonfish inhabits deep ocean waters up to 5,000 feet below the surface, 1,500 meters. The north and western Atlantic oceans and Gulf of Mexico are the only two places where deep sea dragonfish may be found. Even though dragonfish species can be found in most seas worldwide. Number 12. The Frilled Shark They are found in the ocean's deepest recesses. They resemble dinosaurs in their jagged look and are frequently referred to as living fossils. Although frilled sharks are among the fascinating aquatic animals, many people aren't even aware that they exist. They don't make the news like great whites or hammerheads since they don't live close enough to people. However, when it comes down to it, frilled sharks may even be cooler than the more well-known sharks. Ready to learn some interesting facts about frilled sharks? Hold on. What appearance does the frilled shark have? Sharks with frills resemble aquatic snakes. They can move through the water using the force of their tails and have long, sleek bodies that can coil and comfort in a serpentine fashion. Their faces also resemble snakes quite a bit. They differ from other sharks in that their jaws are located at the end of their snouts rather than underneath them. They have deep-set eyes and vertical slits for noses. More than 300 teeth will be visible when they open their mouths. They have a steep slant rearward and are slender with spikes. The frilled shark is a mammal, right? No. Frilled sharks are classified as fish, as opposed to whales and dolphins. They don't give birth to live offspring and have scales like other sharks. They also have chilly blood and are oxygen-dependent organisms that dwell far below the surface. Number 11. Liopleurodon An apex predator of the Jurassic Seas was called Liopleurodon. The animal had a formidable bite thanks to its large head and jaws, which accounted for one-fifth of its length. This concept is further supported by this 20 centimeter teeth that are buried deep within the jaws. Liopleurodon has the classic pliosaur limb configuration, which, while less effective than ictic architecture, nonetheless allows for great acceleration. The configuration of the nostrils makes them highly intriguing since it suggests a directed sense of smell. This would allow Liopleurodon to locate its prey while still being considerably out of visual range, as modern day sharks can. Since we first learned about Liopleurodon, its estimated size has been fluctuating. 
It was never the 25 meter tall behemoth that was depicted in the BBC documentary, Walking with Dinosaurs. The longest specimen of the species L. ferox measured around 639 centimeters, with a head of 126 centimeters in length. All specimens' analyses indicate that the adult Liopleurodon would be between 5 and 7 meters long. However, in 2013, Branson et al. found a pliosaur skull measuring slightly over 1.5 meters belonging to Liopleurodon. If a pliosaur's skull occupies around one-fifth of its entire body, this particular Liopleurodon may have been a little over 7.5 meters long. Number 10. Pliosaurus this was the first pliosaur to be named and was initially classified as a species of plesiosaurus, which is why pliosaurus is used as the type genus for the plesiosauridae. Concerning the long-necked plesiosaurs, pliosaurs evolved to occupy a variety of predatory roles, some of which, like the pliosaurus itself, involved hunting other marine reptiles. The huge teeth, which can be up to 30 centimeters long, and jaws, which would have been fine on any tiny prey like fish, but devastating against large prey like plesiosaurs, ichthyosaurs, smaller pliosaurs, and quite potentially giant fish like Lidocyctes, imply such prey preference. Due to the genus's lengthy history, several fossils belonging to numerous different species have been assigned to it. Nevertheless, the number of valid names has decreased as a result of a more thorough analysis of the fossils. The wastebasket effect, which affected nearly all early discovered prehistoric creatures, includes the parasaurs, pterodactyls, and ramphoricus, as well as the dinosaurs, megalosaurus, and iguanodon. It's also known to have occurred with the plesiosaur plesiosaurus. Around 20,000 parts made up of these fragments, which were difficult to put together, but eventually came together to form the especially large pliosaur that would later become known as Predator X. Before receiving an official binomial name, Predator X soon attracted the attention of the news and popular science media, and was even the subject of an episode of the excellent dinosaur documentary series Planet Dinosaur. Number 9. Giant Spider Crab Deep water is where Japanese giant spider crabs can be found. They typically live in 400 to 900 feet deep water, although they have been seen to dive as far as 2,000 feet. The crabs can be found on the ocean floor in vents and holes. In order to reproduce, these enormous animals migrate to shallower waters, where baby crabs join them. They not only reside in the deep sea ocean, but they are also picky about where they inhabit. These crabs live in seawater in an ocean or sea because they are marine creatures. Only the oceans off the coast of Japan contain them. The Sea of Japan, the Philippine Sea, and the North Pacific Ocean are just a few of the water bodies that surround the chain of islands that make up Japan. Only the water surrounding the Japanese islands of Konshu and Kyushu in the North Pacific Ocean will be home to the giant Japanese spider crabs. They appear to be more prevalent in Surunga Bay, Sagami Bay, and Tosa Bay in particular. Additionally, they are commonly spotted in the waters off the Key Peninsula. Number 8. Six Gill Shark Hexanchus griseus, sometimes known as the six gill shark, is a popular deep water shark species. It's one of the largest sharks that eat things besides plankton as well. The six gill slits on this shark, in contrast to the five on most other sharks, are how it got its name. Numerous other names, including cow shark and mud shark, are also used to refer to it. Although it's considerably more closely connected to species only discovered in fossils, it's related to modern species like dogfish and Greenland shark. Some of the relatives of the six-gill shark go back more than 200 million years. On their backs, towards the middle of their bodies, most other sharks have a prominent dorsal fin. The six-gill comes in a variety of hues, including tan, brown, gray, and even black. Small, brilliant green eyes with black pupils are on the creature. This huge species of shark can reach lengths of up to 18 feet, 5.4 meters. In general, females are larger than males. Although six-gill sharks are typically sluggish and slow, their physical makeup enables them to reach great speeds when pursuing and capturing their prey. These sharks spend the majority of the day in deep water. They migrate vertically up the shallower waters at night to forage. They frequently interact with divers during this time, but unless provoked, they are usually not dangerous to people. Number 7. Helicoprion 
when world-toothed ratfish were first seen in the oceans of late Carboniferous. About 280 million years ago, they were classified as Helicoprion, meaning spiral saw. They survived the Permian-Triassic extinction event and eventually went extinct during the early Triassic, about 225 million years ago. Russia and the western United States are where its remains can be found. However, no other shark or jaw parts have ever been discovered. A holotype based on a single tooth whorl serves as the type specimen. The location of the tooth whorl in the jaw has baffled paleontologists for many years, but a recent reconstruction has revealed that the shark's mouth is most likely location. Helicoprion, a member of the order Eugeniodontida, and a near relative of Edestus, had pectoral fins supported by long radials and a distinctive tooth whorl on the symphosis of the lower jaw. The most well-known Holocoprion fossil specimens can be found in eastern Idaho, northern Utah, and Wyoming's far central western region. The tooth whorl represented all of the lower jaw teeth the person had ever produced, with the older, smaller teeth moving into the center of the whorl as the person developed. According to comparisons with other eugeniotids, Helicoprion may have reached a length of 10 to 15 feet. Number 6. Mosasaurus Usually when people talk about prehistoric creatures, they refer to dinosaurs and other land-ruling animals, but both on land and in the sea, life was harsh during the Mesozoic. The Mosasaurus was one of the extinct animals that once ruled the world's oceans. It's a genus of enormous aquatic carnivorous lizards that lived between 70 and 66 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. The Mosasaurus were not sea dinosaurs, despite coexisting with dinosaurs at about the same time. It was actually a group of reptiles that were more closely linked to modern squamate reptiles, like snakes and lizards. The majority of the Mosasaurus species were enormous in size. In actuality, this genus contained the largest reptiles that belonged to the Mosasaur family. The largest Mosasaur fossil yet discovered is Mosasaurus Hoffmani. Its length was guessed to be between 46 and 56 feet by scientists. Its dimensions are equivalent to those of the Megalodon and a well-known extinct enormous shark said to have existed in the same period. Despite being reptiles, Mosasaurus resembled current whales in look. They have a soft tissue tail with two lobes. The Mosasaurus's tail finishes with a small downward curve. A pair of forelimbs and hind limbs were also present. They employed these paddle-like appendages for swift swimming. Number 5. Titanoboa the extinct snake Titanoboa, or Titanoboa cerajonsis, was the largest known member of the suborder serpents and existed between 66 and 56 million years ago. Numerous fossils dating to 58 to 60 million years ago have led to the discovery of Titanoboa. Paleontologists have calculated the average adult Titanoboa's body length to be about 13 meters, 42.7 feet, and weight to be about 1,135 kilograms based on extrapolations of body size obtained from unearthed vertebrae, individual parts of the backbone, 1.25 tons. Although Titanoboa is connected to extant anacondas and boas, it's unclear which of these contemporary constrictor snakes it was most closely related to. The majority of the specimens are made up of ribs and vertebrae, as is characteristic of snake fossils. Titanoboa may have had more than 250 vertebrae, according to estimates. There has been at least one recovered specimen that is nearly complete and has a skull. The fact that so many of these creatures shared the same enormous proportion suggests that adults of the species often measure 13 meters in length. Compared to record-breaking anacondas, which are approximately 9 meters, almost 29.5 feet long, adult anacondas typically measure around 6.5 5 meters, 21.3 in length. No verified living snake longer than 9.6 meters have been discovered, about 31.5 feet. Number 4. Levathian. Levathian is a sea serpent that is important in both theology and mythology. It is mentioned in Psalms, the book of Isaiah, the book of Job, and the book of Amos, and in some translations, the book of Jonah. It is also mentioned in Enoch. The Levathian is seen as a symbol of chaos, and it has been said that it will eat the damned after they die. In the end, it's wiped out. Christian theologians said that Levathian was the demon of envy which is one of the seven fatal sins. Diagrams made by the Ophid people 
will show that the Levatian is the space of the material world. A Levatian, also known as a Tiamat, is a female monster that lives in the watery abyss. On the other hand, Behemoth is a male monster found in the desert of Dunyadin, east of Eden. The Levatian's body, especially his eyes, has a lot of light-giving power. Rabbi Elizer thought this, and when he and Rabbi Joshua were on a trip together, Rabbi Joshua was scared when a bright light suddenly appeared, and Rabbi Elizer told him that the light probably came from Levathian's eyes. What if this was you? Would you have given it a second glance? Share your view in the comments section below. Number 3. Chronosaurus Chronosaurus was one of the biggest and deadliest marine reptiles in Earth's history. It ruled the early Cretaceous seas. The name Chronosaurus comes from the Greek god Kronos, also known as Cronus, who was Zeus's father. Kronos wasn't really a god, he was a titan, a type of supernatural being that came before the Greek gods. In order to keep his power, the story goes, Kronos ate his own children, including Hades, Hera, and Poseidon. Then Zeus stuck his mythical finger down Dad's throat and made him him throw up his divine children. Even though Kronosaurus was very big, its teeth weren't very good. They were only a few inches long, but they didn't have the sharp edges of more advanced marine reptiles that could hurt you badly, not prehistoric sharks. This pliosaur probably made up for his blunt teeth by having a powerful bite and being able to chase down its prey quickly. Once Kronosaurus had a good hold on a plesiosaur or marine turtle, it could shake the animal until it was unconscious and then crush its head like an underwater grape. Number 2. Big Fin Squid Big Fin Squid is found throughout the deep oceans of the planet, and they have the ability to live deeper than any other squid that is now known. While the squid in this video was filmed at a depth of 1.5 miles, 2,385 meters, the Big Fin Squid's current record depth is 3 miles, 4,735 meters. The Big Fin Squid stands out thanks to its large fins and long limbs, 8 arms and 2 tentacles, with bends like elbows. These squids have a maximum length of 6 meters, 19.7 feet, but most of these are just limbs and tentacles. The longest big fin squid measured 6.4 meters, 21 feet in length. Its tentacles and limbs measured 6.1 meters, 20 feet in length. That is 20 times as long as its body is. It's uncertain exactly how big fin squid use their arms and tentacles. However, these appendages have tiny suckers on them. Scientists believe that squid utilizes them to capture creatures that bump into them as they drag over the seafloor or hang down in the water below their bodies. There may be more big fin squid species than the three that have been officially identified by scientists so far. Number 1. Jacoloteris an extinct Eurypteridia species is Jacolopteris renanae, also known as Otto Jekyll's wing from Rhineland, sea scorpions. One of the two largest arthropods ever found, with an estimated length of 2.5 meters, 8.2 feet. The other is a giant millipede-like animal. Arthropleura, although which animal was larger is unclear. Pterygotus is the second largest Eurypterid. About 390 million years ago, Jacolopteris walked the earth. Despite being referred to as a sea scorpion, it's thought to have lived in freshwater lakes and rivers rather than salty seas. The Chelicerae would have added another meter to its length when stretched. The early Devonian, Emsian, Clerf Formation, Lagerstadt of Wirlrath in Prum, Germany is where the animal's petrified remains were found. Based on the size of its 18-inch, 46cm long, spiky claw, scientists estimate that Jacoloteris renanae measured around 8.2 feet, 2.5 meters long. Long, comparing the size of Chelicerae to those of other, more complete specimens and then sizing up those to comparison specimens to reveal the size. The upper size estimate of Jacoloteris was projected. What a dive that was. Which of these creatures would make you miss your weight in the ocean? Share your view in the comment section below.